How did the war gonna begin? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read it dramatically back to you. All alterations of the panel's text and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. If you want to support this great industry, purchase these books online or at your favorite comic book store. And yes, this is a World of Warcraft comic to match alongside the fact that there is a movie coming out. If you want more World of Warcraft comics, we're going to put one out over here, but a bunch more over on our gaming channel, one of which came out today. I'll link that down below so that you can get another World of Warcraft comic directly after this one if you enjoyed it. Gilneas is a nation built on noble intentions, forged by strong will tempered over time. But that was years ago. Now it is overrun, isolated, withdrawn, besieged. The nation was recovering from a civil war known as the Northgate Rebellion, but soon the nation will see that there is another enemy among them, an enemy that only existed in whispers. Four days before the attack of Gilneas, Halford Ramsey, a renowned investigator, along with Constable Cox, began to examine a murder that is a part of a recent string of killings within the city known as the Starlight Slasher Murders. Halford is known for being a logical man, Man, letting the facts talk for him and not letting his emotions get in the way of his work. Tonight is no different. Halford begins to examine the body of a woman and discover a pocket watch on her, and he follows the clues until he ends up in a forest. As Halford continues to trop along, he hears a growl, and when he looks up, he sees a pair of glowing eyes looking right back at him. Before Halford has a chance to load his pistol, the beast leaps and bites his shoulder, knocking him out. He wakes up and he feels a pain in his shoulder and a voice welcoming him to this abandoned home. Halford demands to know where he is. Why does he live after that attack? And the voice tells him that he lives because the pure one intended him to live. Halford begins to question if the Starlight Murders and the Wolf Cult are connected. And the voice tells him, no, my society, the Wolf Cult, are supporters of King Greymane. But you should be more worried about the Forsaken that are beating at the city's walls. The Forsaken are the name for the undead race that are currently beating against the walls of Gilneas. Soon the wound begins to take its effect on Halford, and the voice tells him that it is now time for him to listen to the tale. A long time ago, the Night Elves of Kalimdor fought in a war known as the War of Satire. The Satire fought for the vengeance of their fallen lord, Xavius, but soon the Night Elves were overrun and they had to retreat. As the Night Elves began to regroup at Rainwood Retreat, one Druid, Rilar, suggests they fight the fell magics with their pack forms, allowing the Druids to transform into wolves, but Malfurion forbade it. Those who would use that form would lose control of themselves, and they would begin to attack friend and foe alike. As the hooded figure continues his story, Halford says that there's no way he could have known these things unless he was there himself. So he pulls down his hood, showing the face of a worgen, and he tells him, yes. I was there. I was known as Rilar then, but now I am Alpha Prime. Over at Greymane Manor, Greymane stands in his observatory asking the shadowy figure behind him if what happened to Halford is the work of Alpha Prime, and the figure tells him she hopes not, for everyone's sake, but only time will tell. Greymane tells the figure that he hopes time is on their side, Belisra. Back in the time of the birth of the Worgen, Rilar's druid brother Arvel and Belisria were madly in love. Arvel promised her no matter what, even in death he would protect her. After a successful raid with the Sentinels, Rilar and Arvel found themselves cornered with only one option to save them, pack form. Arvel says that he's sorry for disobeying Malfurion, but soon the two change into pack form and they begin tearing into the demons. One of the other night elves sees the change and begins to prepare themselves, but soon the two individuals in pack form begin to attack the sentinels, slaughtering some of them. Malfurion jumped in, telling them to stand down, and he pulled the two of them aside, forcing them to release their pack forms. Later, the night elves regrouped again and Malfurion began to scowl the two of them for not only leading assault that he told them not to do, but also using the pack form which he forbade. Rilar says that if he didn't ban this form, they wouldn't be sitting here now, and one of the sentinel behind them said that if he didn't use that form, four of her sisters would be sitting here instead. Malfurion tells him that that form is to never be used again, so now as their punishment, they'll have to live with what they've done. And Arvel vows to never use pack form again. Back in the present, Halford has crawled out of Alpha's base and into the forest to try and fight what's happening to him, but he's unable to hold it back. His bones begin to crack and his joints begin to pop, and soon, Halford fully changed over into a worgen. As he stands there, he howls at the moon. As night falls on Greymane Manor, Belisria continues her story of her people to Greymane. After the recent incident, Belisria and her love Arvel walk together in the woods, and as they walk along, they stumble across the enemy's fortification. Arvel says that he needs to warn the others, but as they leave, the demons begin to close in on them. Arvel tells her to run, but she doesn't leave, and she fights back with Arvel, but it becomes too much. 
and Arvel is struck down. Balistria says that he needs to use his pack form if they're going to survive, and he tells her no, he will not break the vow that he made to Malfurion. As Arvel tries to draw the enemy's attention so that Balistria can run, Arvel is struck down again, and this time for good. As the demon ready their final swing, Rolar appears in pack form and he begins to slaughter the demons. As Balistria grieves, Rolar tells her that they must go see Malfurion about this, and he looks in horror at the outcome of this attack. Rolar tells him that it is because of that vow that Arvel did not use pack form. So, Rolar tells Belistria that they must leave. They need to leave Malfurion to tend to the corpse that his wise choices have created. As time passes, Rolar comes before the priestess Belistria to ask if she's had any success. And she tells him yes, she can channel Alun's light into an object, but she still isn't sure why he would request that. Rolar said that Malfurion was right, the pack form is impossible to control, but he has a means to tame it. He's found a pack of druids willing to embrace the pack form, and they found the Tooth of Goldrin. With the Staff of Alun and the Tooth of Goldrin, they may finally be able to calm the form and control it. It. Rolar orders the tooth be attached to the staff, and so the priestess then calls down the power of the moon goddess, and soon, the artifact and the staff become one, creating the scythe of a loon. Rolar tells everyone that with this they can assume the pack form, and be imbued with the scythe's power. He then begins to change into pack form, and the priestess begins to channel the energy to him, and soon it is done. Rolar has achieved the true form, the purity of essence. As the war with the Night Elves and the Satyr continue, Rolar now takes those who have changed into their true form into battle. Malfurion watches as Rolar now Alpha Prime rips apart the demons and he howls towards the moon. But soon after, Alpha Prime turns his attention towards Malfurion, calling out his name! Now is the time, the time for Alpha to bring his vengeance down on Malfurion for the brothers that he lost due to this vow to never use pack form. How wrong Malfurion was! As the rest of Alpha's pack began to fight with the Night Elves, they began to see their bites, causing them to change and change into the beast that Alpha has become. Malfurion begins to call forth vines to bind Alpha in his pack and allow himself and the rest of the Night Elves who haven't changed yet to escape. As the Night Elves begin to regroup, Malfurion explains that they may have found a way to stop this new enemy, and they plan on using their new power source, the Scythe of Alun. With the Scythe, Malfurion can seal Alpha and his pack inside of the Emerald Dream, a place that can calm the beasts and allow them to dream. But the Night Elves ask how will he obtain the Scythe, and a voice above everyone calls to him, telling them that she has brought it down, and everyone looks up to see Melissaria. She tells everyone that she made a mistake in allowing this to happen, and she plans to be redeemed for it. Back in the current times, Halford sits and he begins to read the book given to him by Alpha Prime. The book purpose is to show all to him, and as he reads it, he notices something within the pages. It's the way the R is printed on them. It's slanted. The same way that the suspected rebel sympathizer Maxwell Wiggins Gazette is printed. Alpha said that he was a supporter of King Greymane, but instead Alpha is working with someone who supports the rebel forces that Greymane locked away in prison. So that must mean that everything that Alpha told him is a lie. He's planning to attack Gilneas City. Back at Gilneas, the attack had begun finally, and it wasn't just the Forsaken who had broken through that they had to fight. It was the Worgen Alpha trying to take over the city. As Greyman helps push back the wargans, he receives word that the enemy is closing in on Merchant Square, but so is Prince Liam, as he approaches with a detachment of soldiers. Greyman tells the guard to go report back to Liam that he is to release Darius Crowley, the rebel leader, and tell him that for now they are to set aside their quarrel, or they will have nothing left to fight about. As Alpha stands in the town, he smells something. A scent, and that scent is of a traitor. Alpha tells them to come out, and through the shadows, Belistria, the priestess, steps out telling Alpha that it is him who betrayed the people. Alpha tells her no, that it is her who has forgotten gotten their purpose, to take vengeance on what Malfurion has caused. The priestess tries to reason with him, but Alpha attacks her, hitting her and throwing her into a building. During this time, Greymane has ordered the release of the rebel leader Darius Crowley, so Darius is now gathering up his men, and he tells them that the royals have cursed their names. They've made them out to be warmongers, but tonight they will change that. They will rewrite their names as the ones that helped defend Gilneas. Over in Greymane court, Alpha holds the priestess by the neck, demanding to know where the scythe is, but she won't tell him. And then he tells her that if she won't tell him, then she is of no use to him. But before he can go in for the final attack, he's knocked away by another worgen. Halford! Alpha stands up furious. This is how you treat the gift that I have given to you. Halford says nothing, but the priestess hits him with her light, casting him down to the river below. Inside of Light's Dawn Cathedral, Darius and his men station themselves, and they fight as much as they can, running out of ammo. Darius tells everyone to be proud of this moment, to be proud of what they've done, the lives that they've saved, as there is no greater honor. Darius continues his fight, and he notices something coming from the door. And he says, well, that's not a good thing. And behind him, the worgens begin leaping through the glass windows. Over in Duskhaven, Greymane meets with the alchemist Krennan. Greymane has a plan, but as Krennan hands him a potion, Liam runs over to him, telling him that some of the men have spotted a handful of beasts in the woods, but they don't seem to be the worgen focused on the attack. They seem to be citizens who have been changed into worgen, and on top of that, Godfrey wants to take men out to hunt them. Greymane says, of course he does. But then Greymane tells Liam to report back that none of them are to be killed, only caught. 
Liam tells him that Godfrey won't be happy to hear that, but Greymane tells him to say that there's a good reason. One that will prove most valuable. Halford and the priestess begin to escape back to Tal'Doran, and they regroup. But as Halford begins to properly introduce himself, he's interrupted with word that Valorn has arrived with the site. It was recently liberated from Duskwood. Later, Godfrey returns with the worgen that he captured, and Greymane begins to test how the potion that he received affects them, and it appears to calm them, giving them back their sanity. Everyone begins to question what they should do with these individuals, but Greymane says that they are still Gilneans, and this is the first step, but everyone can hear a loud boom. He rushes over to see what's going on, and that's when he sees the Forsaken ships beginning to invade Duskhaven. Greymane tells Krennan to use all of the remaining potions on the Feral Worgens and release them. The potions work, and he will prove it by leading this army himself. Halford and the Priestess begin to discuss their next plan of action. They either have to keep the scythe here away from everyone, or deliver it to Greymane. Halford says that delivering it would be a foolish move, but the Priestess tells him that he only thinks that because he hasn't undergone the ceremony yet. He hasn't reached a balance with his new form. As the two begin to bicker over who's right, another worgen appears, telling the priestess that there are more refugees. She begins to thank Darius, but then Halford sees him as the rebel leader and attacks him. The priestess tells him to stop, explaining that Darius is the one who helped the citizens escape. So right now, they're gonna have to work together. And as for the scythe, she'll decide what's best for it. Everyone begins to fight off the Forsaken as best as they can, but Liam asks if anyone has seen his father Greymane, and one man tells him, there. Everyone turns and they see Greymane standing there with an army of worgen. He tells them that it's time that they taunt these Forsaken that there is nothing more dangerous than a cornered animal. Halford decided to undertake the ceremony, and as he wakes back up, he sees that he has reached his true balance. He is now in his human form. Behind him, Darius informs him that he has recently spoke with Greymane, and Greymane wishes for all of them to work together. Worgen, Night Elves, fighting as one, and they will fight for Gilneas. Darius also mentions that Greymane is off to investigate a report of survivors, and he's headed off to Tempest Reach. But as we see Greymane, Krennan, and Godfrey heading off towards Tempest Reach, Godfrey confronts Greymane for what he has become. Krennan tells him not to, but Godfrey pushes him out of the carriage, and Greymane calls Godfrey a traitor. But Godfrey tells him that it is actually you, Greymane, who is really the traitor. But I have an idea. To counter the Forsaken, we will negotiate with them. Back in Tal'Doran, Alfred begins to descend on their location. He begins to call them out. The priestess appears before him with the rest of the worgen behind her. Alpha calls her a traitor, and that she shall die with the rest of her flock. But the priestess tells him no. There is only one who betrayed anyone. She finishes the story of how they brought the Night Elves and the original worgen together. She gave the sight to Malfurion to seal Alpha in the Emerald Dream. The priestess then told Alpha that just as before, it is time for him to go back in the dream. But before she can complete the ritual, she is shot in the arm by a Forsaken. Alpha uses the Forsaken to surround them, and as Alpha takes the scythe, he tells the priestess that it is time. The scythe will not banish. It will bring back those that are still dreaming, and he will soon march on Darnassus itself to try and get Malfurion. But for now, she will die for her transgressions. But before he can land his strike, a blue light in the shape of a wolf appears, knocking Alpha away. The wolf pins Alpha down and bites on Alpha's head, crushing it. And then the ghost begins to take the form of a night elf, and the priestess sees that it is Arvel. He tells her that he swore to protect her, even in death. She tells him that she's sorry. She's sorry about all of this, and Arvel tells her that all of her trespasses are forgiven. However, he can no longer stay, and the priestess tells him goodbye and thank you, always. Back at Tempest Reach, Godfrey begins to hold Greymane hostage, but as soon as Godfrey realizes that they are alone, the worgen begin to surround him, and Godfrey decides that he would rather kill himself than live with Greymane as a king, and he jumps off a cliff. As Greymane returns, he tells everyone that it was his fault. He was the reason why Alpha came back. Greymane allowed him to be summoned from the Emerald Dream, hoping to use Alpha in his pack to fight the Scourge. However, the ones that he allowed to come became wild, and they attacked everyone, himself included. And no longer will he live in fear. He will not live with this secret. And Greymane stands before his people, in his form, his true form, a worgen. And he tells everyone that this is the secret that he's been keeping. And he asks everyone, who will stand with him to take back Gilneas? Everyone begins to shout that they are with him, and the crowd begins to chant, Long live Gilneas! Now the story then goes into World of Warcraft Cataclysm, the opening storyline for the worgen. So if you go start a worgen, you can see where the story goes next. But like I said, don't forget, we do have other World of Warcraft comic books over on our gaming channel, so click the link down below, go check that out. And I also did the Warcraft movie lore for the channel lore. I'm also going to link that down below because I had a lot of fun doing it and I was hoping you guys would go check it out, maybe give it a like. On that note, guys, I'll see you right here at Comic Storian. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Comic Storian and Instagram at Comic Storian. Have a good one.